Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Real Sports Updates here. Back again with another video. <clears throat> Let's get right into it. Uh, you see the thumbnail. You see the title. Derek Stingley Jr. Um, is he a future Charger? Now, th this was something that I really didn't even think about as a fan um, until I seen uh, Brandon Staley right there um, talking to Derek Stingley Jr. during his, his pro day. Um, and watching very intently at, you know, um, the skills that he was he was putting on uh, showcase, you know, for the rest of the league. Um, now, to me, to me, this is a very, if you're a Charger fan, this is a very, very good sign. Because I, I don't think that it's going to happen. I think I think Stingley will be off the board, um, pro probably top, at this point, probably like top seven, I would say. I don't think he, I don't think he go past seven. Some somebody's gonna snatch him up um, because he he is he is clearly their best corner um, on the board. I think he's better than than uh, Gardner out of uh, Cincinnati. I think he's much better. Um, he's he's faced way way better um, competition, way better talent in the SEC. So I think that he is number one. But but I would not be surprised if the Chargers uh, moved up and and drafted him. Um, <clears throat> Now a lot of fans are probably they probably don't like the idea of that, but if you look at it and it hit me, I was in the shower last night and it actually hit me. I thought about it and I was like, "Wow, this is the Bill Belichick, um, the 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 Bill Belichick, the Nick Saban type of game plan as far as building a defense." Um, and what I mean by that is being solid at corner, being solid at corner. And just being solid across the board um, in the secondary. That's been one of the biggest things. I think if, if you look at some of the, the best Patriots teams, um, the Super Bowl teams, if you look at you know Nick Saban, you look at his, his championship teams, there's talent all across the board. But the the best part of the defense, the which is almost always, you know, the best part of their defenses has, has been the secondary. Um, and it's a lot of guys who are talented in the secondary uh but it's more so about the coaching and the communication that you know the 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 cornerbacks and the safeties have um and i want everybody to look back if you're a real real football fan if you're really 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 into football i want everybody to look back go back and there you know just watch some highlights on the uh i i believe it was the 2018 2019 um AFC Championship game when the the Patriots faced the the Chiefs in um, in uh, Kansas City. Uh, that was when the uh, the Patriots ended up beating the Chiefs in overtime. But I want everybody to go back and look at that game. I, I believe the Chiefs were favored by like four four points. I think I want to say. Um, and obviously at that point they were setting the world on fire. It was Mahomes uh, first year as a starter, fifty touchdowns, five thousand yards. They were really lighting the world on fire, and everybody was afraid of everybody was afraid of the Kansas City Chiefs. Everybody was afraid of, you know, their offense, what they can do as far as the passing game is concerned. Um, they really were, they really were the greatest show on turf. Well, you know, the equivalent to the greatest show on turf, and everybody was afraid of them. If you go back and you look at that game, that AFC Championship game. What did the Patriots do? The Patriots came out and they did what nobody was expecting them to do. They came out and they played zero coverage pretty much the whole game, right? And zero coverage is, you know, you're playing man-to-man, -man, um, your safety, you have no safety pretty much, and you're bringing blitz from everywhere. You're putting pressure on the quarterback. You're trying to confuse the offensive line. You're coming out in multiple looks. Uh, you can't tell where the pressure is coming from. You don't know who's coming. You don't know who's dropping in the coverage. But that's pretty much what the Patriots did. That's what Bill Belichick did. Now that that team had talent in the in the the defensive backfield. I think that was J.C. Jackson's rookie year, if I'm not um, mistaken. And that's when everybody can see that. Oh, okay, this this kid can play uh, undrafted. You know, he can play. And he was lining up. He was the one lining up on Tyreek Hill, um, and he pretty much shut him down. I, I remember Tyreek Hill having one big play, but he pretty much shut him down for the you know the entirety of the game. Uh, Malcolm Butler, I think, was on the other side as well, too. Devin McCourty as well. But it was the coaching. It was the secondary coaching that, you know, when when I turned that game on, 
and I believe it was after the first quarter, I uh, I was watching it with a friend, and I said, I think the Patriots might, might win this, you know, because Kansas City was not they they were they were caught off guard, but once they did figure out what was going on, they still couldn't do anything because the pressure was there. Patrick Mahomes couldn't set his feet, and then you know this is when the 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 Chiefs were very very heavy on the the scramble drill stuff and, you know, just creating stuff after the, the, the play is broken and all that stuff. So Patrick Mahomes was really, really heavy, heavy, heavy into this, um, his first year as a starter, the first couple of years as a starter, actually. Um, so they were very hard to contain, very hard to contain. But the Patriots went out there and did it. And it's because of the secondary. So this is a really, really good sign to me, if you know, as a Charger fan. I am looking at the I'm looking at the Chargers as and I'm looking at Brandon Staley as um, a guy who is learning. He's learning from the best people uh, in the business. Right. Um, You know, I know every coach wants to have their own input, you know, their own imprint on on how they build a team, um, how they construct a team personnel wise, whatever. But Brandon Staley is a smart dude um, and he he's not trying to reinvent the wheel. Now this is talent. Now you can acquire all the talent you want to. Now the 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 just you know the juxt the, the the juxtaposition to this is having premium coaching um, for the 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 secondary for all the talent that you acquire. You need coaching. You have to have coaching, and the guys have to be coached up. You know you can't just acquire talent. And, you know, just tell those guys to go out there and play. You need, they have to be coached well. And, you know, I think Brandon Staley, I think he's, I think the Chargers are going to go into this being um, cognizant that the defensive backfield needs to be coached up. Um, They have to be coached up to the point where they can communicate effectively. Um, Just like I said, just like the Patriots example, Um, if you go back and watch that game, the like I said, the scramble drill was a big thing for the Kansas City Chiefs at that point. The Patriots, they, they there was a few plays, and, and I, I wish I could go back and, and break down the footage and, and put it in this video, but there was a few plays, scramble drill stuff, where cornerbacks, safeties were communicating. Um, routes were getting passed off effortlessly from a corner right to a safety. A guy was coming up and making a play. Um, not allowing a completion or separating the receiver from the ball. Like, these are the things that the secondary did. So I think the Chargers are on the right path. They're on the right path. Brandon Staley is on the right path. Now, these guys have to be coached up. Um, and, you know, they, they they have to be comfortable within the, the, the scheme of the defense. But this is a very, very good sign. This also tells me, and if you're a Charger fan, this should also tell you the Chargers – Defense specifically is going to be getting more exotic this year. Um, I don't think they really got exotic at all. Pretty much last year, they had trouble stopping the run, so they they couldn't you know get exotic in in you know as far as the formations and the fronts and whatnot. But this tells me that the Chargers are going to get exotic. They're trying to put together the best defensive backfield that they can. You're trying to put together. Um, you know, the defensive backfield is already looking good right now as it is. But if the Chargers were to draft Derek Stingley, then now, you know, you have if, – if he comes in and he performs the way that everybody knows that he can perform, then now you do have the best defensive backfield um, in football. So that means you're going to get exotic as far as your fronts. And this is the same defense that, you know, Bill Belichick runs. It's the same defense that Brandon Staley learned from, you know, his mentor um, Vic Fangio. It's the same thing, right? It's base 3-4, and it is a multiple uh, front look. So you can come out and get multiple fronts. You can give a 4-3 look. Um, you know, you can come out and do, you know, really, really exotic things, in, in even in your nickel and your dime uh, packages and stuff. You know, you can you can send, um, you know, you can send Bosa into uh, coverage in the flats. You can bring somebody else. Like, there's a lot of different things you can do with this defense that the Chargers really didn't do last year. And I pointed out several times in the video that several times in, in several videos that, you know, last season was, wasn't really, uh, it wasn't really indicative of what the defense, uh, can be under Brandon Staley. Again, a lot of the guys last year were, were holdovers from the Gus Bradley defense. Um, and a lot of them didn't fit, you know, into what the, the, uh, new scheme is that Brandon Staley brought. But 
if you draft Derek Stingley, then now, now you have flexibility. Now you have flexibility with what you're able to do up front with your front seven. Now you can bring up your front seven, your front eight. You can bring Derwin James down in the box, right? You can bring him in the box. He can play as a linebacker, right? He can he can come up. He can tackle. You can blitz him a lot more now too. There's a lot of different things you can do with this um, with this defense, uh, especially if you have. You know, you have four guys in the defensive backfield that are going to communicate, um, that are going to play tough, tough coverage, but they're also going to be smart. Um, and, you know, they're 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 going to be a, aggressive. They're going to be physical at the line of scrimmage um, and they're going to be ball hawks, you know, and that's that's pretty much it looks like to me. That's what the Chargers are trying to build. So I didn't even think about corner at in, in at, you know, in the first round of the draft, but. If Derek Stingley is there, if the Chargers decide, like I said, I don't think he's going to last maybe seven, maybe seven, maybe eight. Chargers are at 17. If they trade up a little bit, if they trade up a few spots, then, you know, you never know. If he's there, if he's there, I would not be upset at all. I would absolutely not be upset at all if he's there. Um, because now you have flexibility as far as, you know, who you want in to be your slot corner. Um, I say Michael Davis. If the the Chargers want to to do that, slide him over into the slot corner. He's a big guy. Um, he's fast, um, and he's pretty physical as well too. So he works at the at the slot cornerback position. Um, I don't think you can put Asante Samuel there because of his uh, concussion um, issues that he had last season. So I think I think he has to be on the outside. You know, I I don't think that he can, you know, really come up and, and play the run as aggressively. You know, with with the concussion thing. Um, but it does make a lot of sense. If Derek Stingley is there and the Chargers draft him, it makes a lot of sense. It makes all the sense in the world. Especially considering what Brandon Stingley his defense into, what he wants to do um, defensively, you know, with the, the acquisitions that the Chargers have already made. You know, you're getting stouter up front. You know, now you have another pass rusher on the opposite side of Joey Bosa. So this makes a lot of sense what the Chargers want to do. Um, again, the the... The, the, the place that's really lacking right now is a linebacker position. I, I believe that that is going to get addressed um, in either the second or third wave of free agency and obviously in the draft. But, um, you know, everywhere else is starting to look stacked on, on, on defense, you know, specifically um, the defensive backfield. If Derek Stingley is there and the Chargers do take a man, this that that would be that would be one of the draft picks. I think that, you know, if you look back, and the Chargers do end up making a deep playoff run. That would be one of the draft picks that everybody looks at and says, wow, this dude is amazing. Um, this is exactly what the Chargers needed. And, you know, especially what the Chargers need in, in the AFC West, you know, especially considering how uh, grueling it's going to be um, this coming season. But, you know, I just thought that that was very interesting, seeing Brandon Staley right there up front coaching up Derek Stingley, um, talking to him. I, I, I see what he's doing. I like it. I like it. I like that he is uh, building up this defense the way that other great defenses have been built. Um, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. There's no need to, you know, be so ego driven that you completely forget about, you know, what the history of the NFL looks like and how teams have had success, how Super Bowl teams have had success. And, you know, it's pretty much following the same formula, right? You can put your own stamp on it as a head coach, but you have to follow the same formula. You're not going to win. You're not going to make the playoffs. You're not going to have success in the playoffs without good players. And spe specifically at these positions, you know, for the defense that you want to run. So, um, you know, I'm I, I'm excited. I'm curious to know what everybody th everybody else thinks. So hit the comment section. Uh, should the Chargers draft Derek Stingley? If he's there. If he's there. If they decide to move up a few picks and he's there, should the Chargers draft him? Or should they draft, you know, somebody else, uh, best player available, or a specific position uh, a position group that the Chargers need to fill. Let me know what you think. Um, I think that this works. Like I said, before before you comment, go back and watch some of that game. Go back and watch some of that game, 2018. The best passing offense, you know, ever statistically in the, in the history of the NFL gets shut down at home by, you know, Bill Belichick's defense and Bill Belichick's defense with tremendous secondary play. Um, just go back and look at it. Go back and look at it. I'm, I'm not saying that the Chargers would be as good or whatever, but I, hey, there, there's 
there's a chance. And you don't, you know, you don't stop great offenses without great cornerbacks, without great safeties, um, and without them being coached up as well as they possibly can. So, um, to me, it makes a whole lot of sense, whole, a whole lot of sense, but you know, Hey, for everybody else, it might not, but let me know what you think. Hit the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, please. If you like the content, please, please, please like the video, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Almost had a thousand followers, my goal. So, uh, there's going to be more content coming up soon. The draft is moving closer. Um, uh, we are starting to get more and more draft stories now. So I'm definitely going to be covering those as they come along. Um, but that's all I got for this one, guys. Until next time, I will see you later.